Can you possibly go wrong with steak and cheese on bread? Apparently you can, which is why we're here to rank steak sandwiches from worst to best. Invented in Philadelphia in 1930, the Philly cheesesteak initially consisted of roast beef and grilled onions. Cheese, or more specifically provolone, was added to the sandwich in the 1940s. Domino's Philly cheesesteak sandwich consisted of green peppers, onions, and mushrooms, as well as provolone and American cheese. This chain's take has received predominantly tepid feedback from patrons. Consumers highlight that while the sandwich has a decent amount of cheese, the same can't be said for the steak, which is noticeably scarce. Mickey Willstone of the Arulio News Network comments that although the beef isn't quite as bad as he expected, it's more akin to a pizza topping than steak. Willstone adds that the sandwich comes with plenty of bread and very little meat. Meanwhile, one TripAdvisor reviewer isn't as diplomatic, saying, disgusting Philly cheesesteak sandwich. They should be ashamed to even send this out the door. I'll bet the person who made it wouldn't even eat it. That's weird. Why is there a Domino's guy here? Which Witch has a pretty unique ordering system. To purchase a sandwich, patrons get a paper bag with the corresponding sandwich type they want, or one that allows them to build their own culinary creations. They then mark the bag with their name, pay for their purchase, and wait until their name is called out. Unfortunately, the ordering system is where the excitement stops because the chain's Philly cheesesteak sandwich seems to fall short of expectations. Composed of sirloin steak, provolone, sautéed bell peppers, and caramelized onions, the Philly cheesesteak sandwich has left some diners underwhelmed. One Reddit reviewer says that the sandwich was much smaller than they expected, adding, Welcome to flavorless town. Unseasoned steak, as in no salt, pepper, nothing. Basic cheese, which I'm guessing they ran out of halfway through making it. Basic green peppers and probably the skin of an onion. One YouTube reviewer describes the Witch Witch cheesesteak sandwich as messy and somewhat strange tasting. This person believes it has a flavor reminiscent of eggs, which seems a bit odd for a Philly cheesesteak. Despite its name, the Outback Steakhouse isn't an Australian invention. Instead, the chain was founded in Tampa, Florida in 1988 when four friends decided to venture into the world of casual dining with an Australian-themed twist. While the chain specializes in steaks and seafood, it does have a steak sandwich on its menu. The prime rib sandwich includes roasted prime rib, provolone cheese, grilled mushrooms and onions, and the chain's spicy bloom sauce. All the ingredients are nestled into a toasted baguette. It's important to note that when it comes to ribs, the prime designation relates to the cut of the meat rather than its quality. While Outback Steakhouse's prime rib sandwich may sound good on paper, the menu item has failed to impress steak sandwich connoisseurs. One dissatisfied patron on TripAdvisor says, Prime rib is supposed to be served medium rare. This resembled something like dried shoe leather. It was not even just medium, but well, well done ten times over. Another reviewer writing for Complaints Board says that what they were served didn't look anything like the picture online. This consumer explained, They brought me the sandwich and I was shocked. It was as if I had ordered something entirely different from the menu. It was covered in mayonnaise, mushrooms, chopped up tiny pieces of beef, and dark brown onions on a crappy hamburger-like bun. Outback Steakhouse Extreme. Punish your toilet. Ruth's Chris Steakhouse's steak sandwich seems to have all the right elements, save for the slightly hefty price tag. The menu offering comes with a sliced filet that's cooked to your desired level of doneness and a creamy Bernays sauce. Somewhat similar to Hollandaise, Bernays is made with white wine vinegar, butter, egg yolks, lemon juice, shallots, and herbs. The sandwich comes with USDA prime beef, which is of higher quality than choice and select beef, and features abundant marbling. Instead of a flavorless roll, the item is served on garlic bread. Despite its pedigree, Ruth's Chris Steakhouse's steak sandwich seems to have failed to impress some of the chain's patrons. One unimpressed Grubhub customer complains that the sandwich they were served looked nothing like the photo on the menu, saying, I ordered a steak sandwich, which in the photo had lovely slices stacked next to one another, and I ordered medium rare. In reality, the sandwich was various sizes and shaped pieces of meat in varying degrees of doneness. That being said, some reviewers disagreed and enjoyed the dish. One YouTuber describes the sandwich as awesome, adding, The bread, more precisely garlic bread, was buttery. It was crispy on the outside and soft on the inside. The filet was amazing. It had blue cheese on it, which was awesome. I definitely want to get one again. 
True to its name, Firehouse Subs was founded by two firefighters in 1994. While the Firehouse Steak and Cheese Sandwich is one among many beef sub offerings, this one comes with sautéed steak. The other ingredients in the sandwich include melted provolone cheese, bell peppers, caramelized onions, and mayo. Firehouse's Steak and Cheese Sandwich has seen a range of feedback, both good and bad. One sandwich enthusiast on Reddit says that Firehouse Subs is their favorite chain, elaborating, I may be slightly addicted to the Firehouse Steak and Cheese. It's a little pricey for a sandwich, but the quality is always good and worth the extra cost. Unfortunately, that's not the reaction of all consumers, as some see the sandwich in a completely different light. One Grubhub customer says, Steak and Cheese Sandwich was dry and had no condiments with it. Another patron on Yelp unfavorably compares the sandwich to the Philly offered by Jersey Mike's. The Firehouse Sub has significantly less meat in it, and the meat and bread don't taste as good as Jersey Mike's. The bread does not seem to be freshly made, or it is a different type of bread that is harder and tougher. Although Panera started out by selling freshly baked bread, the chain has since expanded its menu to include pizzas, soups, salads, and of course, sandwiches. One of the more interesting offerings is the toasted steak and white cheddar sandwich, an artisanal ciabatta filled with grass-fed beef, aged white cheddar, pickled red onions, and horseradish sauce. Despite its seemingly well-balanced medley of flavors, the sandwich has garnered mixed reviews from patrons. Andrew Lassane from Insider ranked it as his favorite Panera Bakery menu item, praising the way the perfectly melted cheese and crispy bread complement the juicy and flavorful steak cuts. However, not everybody agrees with Lassane's review. One patron on Reddit says that while the toasted steak and white cheddar is their favorite sandwich at Panera, the offering can be hit or miss. They explain, Most of the time it's fine, but sometimes, like today, it's just gross looking. Red, undercooked meat, greasy melted cheese, and just generally unappealing. A Yelp reviewer echoes this sentiment, saying, the amount of horseradish on this sandwich is burning my nose. This is the worst sandwich I've ever received from Panera. I usually love this sandwich, but it's almost uneatable. Chili's has a Philly cheesesteak that's composed of thin slices of steak, grilled onions and peppers, white queso, and jalapenos, all served in a toasted buttery roll. Smell that Philly steak. How about those onions and bell peppers? The sandwich lacks consistency. Some customers love it, while others find it disappointing. The main issue seems to be the type of cheese used. While the menu lists the ingredient as white queso, one reviewer on ReviewStream identifies it as either provolone or cheese whiz. Regardless, this consumer appears to enjoy it, adding, they were both good. It was something about the provolone, though, that made the sandwich richer. A patron over on Grubhub remarks that there is something rather runny about the sandwich, saying, bun was saturated, couldn't even pick up the steak sandwich. If you've stepped inside a mall food court in the last 30 years, you've probably run across this popular steak sandwich chain. Charlie's Cheesesteak's unique take on the classic cheesesteak sandwich consists of steak, green peppers, mushrooms, provolone, lettuce, tomato, pickles, and mayo. It's made with grilled USDA choice steak, which is a high-quality beef with less marbling than USDA prime, but more than USDA select beef. Since it's on the leaner side, it tends to be tender, but slightly less juicy than its higher-grade counterpart. The reviews of Charlie's Philly cheesesteak sandwich are mixed. One patron on TripAdvisor calls the sandwich excellent, adding that it's the best Philly cheesesteak sandwich they have ever tasted. Another reviewer on TripAdvisor echoes this sentiment, saying that the menu item is very tasty. However, not everybody is as excited about the sandwich. One TripAdvisor user writes, The so-called steak on my sandwich tasted like burned paper. Potbelly Sandwich Works features around 20 choices on its menu, making it one of the go-to places in the country to enjoy freshly made sandwiches. One of the stars of the menu is the Steakhouse Beef Sandwich. Simple yet indulgent, the menu item includes Angus roast beef, provolone, blue cheese crumbles, and horseradish aioli. For purists, the chain also offers the roast beef version of the sandwich with Angus roast beef and provolone. Despite the somewhat unusual combination of flavors, the sandwich has received overwhelmingly positive reviews. The Southern Snack on YouTube rates it 8.5 out of 10, while another YouTuber, Stupid Food Review Show, gives it a 9 out of 10. However, not everybody is on the same page when it comes to the meaty meal. One DoorDash reviewer in particular seems unimpressed with the offering, saying, My sandwich was a mess of horseradish aioli with more sauce on it than meat. 
At Jersey Mike's, all subs are assigned their own numbers, and when it comes to steak, the chain offers four choices. Number 17 is Mike's Famous Philly, which includes steak, onions, peppers, and American cheese. Number 66 is Portobello Cheese Steak, which is identical to Mike's Famous Philly, but also includes portobello mushrooms. Number 43 is a Chipotle Cheese Steak, which is also essentially Mike's Famous Philly with an extra kick of the chain's spicy Chipotle mayo. Lastly, number 6, Roast Beef and Provolone, gets its name from its contents, roast beef and provolone. The sandwiches can be made on white bread, wheat bread, rosemary parmesan bread, or a gluten-free option for an additional cost. Despite the fact that it's made with USDA choice beef, Mike's Famous Philly Sandwich has received relatively positive feedback from customers. It has been ranked as the second most popular of Mike's subs by Tasting Table, which praises the menu item for its balance of flavors. In particular, the outlet applauds the item's finely shaved and flavorful beef, the creamy and slightly salty American cheese, and the hint of sweetness imparted by the onions. Over on TripAdvisor, one reviewer says that they love the menu item, adding, Thin, tender pieces of sliced beef, flavorful with each bite. Onions, peppers, and white cheese on a soft sub bun. Easy to bite through the soft bun and tender meat. Just a really good hot sub. That takes me to my happy place. Oh, wait. Jersey Mike's is my happy place. The shaved steak sandwich at Del Frisco's Grill comes with USDA Prime Top Round, which is sourced from the upper portion of the hind legs of a cow. Since these muscles aren't exercised as much, this cut is more tender than the other sections of the round. The meat is served with creamy horseradish on a soft French roll and comes with au jus. This shaved steak sandwich has received mostly positive reviews from patrons, who have lauded its blend of flavors and the option to personalize it to their liking. Some, however, have mixed things to say. One TripAdvisor review compares the dish to a French dip sandwich, adding, The au jus and horseradish were a nice touch and really brought the otherwise bland meat to life. Another customer writes on TripAdvisor, The bread was uninteresting, though the actual steak was good. Capital Grill's ribeye steak sandwich may not be the most budget-friendly lunch option, but it stands a world apart from your ordinary run-of-the-mill steak sandwich. Simple yet indulgent, the item consists of a ribeye steak expertly grilled to your exact specifications, caramelized onions, and creamy Havarti cheese. All of this goodness is nestled between two slices of freshly grilled French loaf. The Capital Grill also serves miniature tenderloin sandwiches with mushrooms and herb cheese, which are perfect for sharing. This sandwich is a hit with patrons. One happy reviewer on TripAdvisor explains why they are partial to the dish, saying, The ribeye sandwich is the best you will ever have. I was served the sandwich with a steak knife but didn't need it. The ribeye was tender and melted in your mouth. Another customer agrees, commenting on Yelp, the steak is literally cooked to perfection, medium rare. The French loaf looks like it will be very hard to bite into until you actually do, and it's that flawless crunch on the outside with the soft breading on the inside.